Hi, I'm Bill Perkins. Welcome to Compass TV. If you love the Lord, love your Bible, and love to learn, you're going to love this presentation. The Bible says our children are gifts from God. They're the only thing on the earth that we can take with us to heaven. God says parents should teach their kids scripture morning, noon, and night. But today we have schools, school teachers doing all the teaching and in a godless environment. And what our kids are being taught would make a sailor blush. <laughs> Apologist Russ Miller exposes all of this in an eye-opening presentation entitled Inside the Public School Nightmare. Thank you. How are you doing this evening? Wow, that's great. Awesome. Um, I'm honored to speak with you guys tonight. I'm going to actually talk about uh, public school, public education, government education uh, in this nation. Because it has a big impact, and you can see some of the results uh, if you watch the evening news. So let's go ahead and talk about that. You know, after God had led Joshua and the Israelites across the Jordan, they were a very God-honoring nation. However, we find in Judges that there arose another generation which knew not the Lord, and they forsook the God, the Lord God of their fathers, and they father, followed other gods. It took the Israelites one generation to go from being a God-honoring nation to being a pagan nation. How many, how many generations did it take? One generation. You know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. 93% of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were Christians. 95% of the authors of the U.S. Constitution were Christians. This nation was founded upon the rock. Some of the great founders and um, leaders of our nation, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, George Washington Carver, all of these great men and leaders and innovators had one thing in common. None ever spent a single day in a public school. Voluntary public schools, voluntary public schools, taught from the Bible. They used the Bible to teach reading, to teach the ABCs, to teach writing. They used the Bible in the initial voluntary public schools. In fact, America's uh, university system was started out as seminaries. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, they are all now staunch anti-Christian institutions. As a matter of fact, many of what we still think are Christian institutions, you might want to take a very close look at. Several major developments occurred throughout the 1800s that would forever change the shape of the culture of our nation. First of all, at the start of the 1800s, millions of years' beliefs were invented. Forced public schools were started. In the mid-1800s, both communism and Darwinism were thought up, and industrial capitalism replaced entrepreneurial capitalism toward the end of the 1800s. It was 1819 that the first forced public school was opened in Boston, Massachusetts. The Bible tells us about people who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Known socialist Roger Owen stated, If teachers are trained by the government, they will do the government's bidding. And the first government-run teacher's college opened in 1822. It was in 1830 Charles Lyell published his book, Principles of Geology. This is the book that actually popularized the man-made geologic column, which is where the old earth beliefs are derived from, based on the belief there was never a global flood. Now, Jesus said you tell good from bad by the fruit, correct? And we can trust what Jesus said, right? Well, the first major fruit coming from the old earth beliefs was Darwinian evolutionism. His book, The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life, was published in 1859. Ten years after his book came out, Harvard appointed Charles Eliot the new president of Harvard, 
and he dedicated his life to making millions of years leading to Darwinism the new foundation for America's educational system. Toward the end of the Civil War, the transition took place from America's entrepreneurial capitalism to industrial capitalism. Major industrialists and financiers had put millions of dollars into their factories. And this required a dumbed-down population that would be happy to take jobs in their factories and do the same menial job day after day after day and then go home and buy the very products they were building in the factories. They certainly didn't want some up-and-coming individual, entrepreneurial individual, to come up with an idea that would make their factories and their products obsolete. This is Karl Marx. He's known as the father of communism. He said, we must abolish the family and replace home education with social education. That was a Karl Marx foundation. This is Horace Mann. He's known as the father of public education in America. He stated, we who are engaged in the sacred cause of education are entitled to look upon all parents as having given hostages to our cause. This is G. Stanley Hall. He was the first president of the American Psychological Association and an educational reformer. He believed children were going through their Darwinian evolutionary stages as they aged. He applied this to education. And that is why we now have all six-year-olds together in classrooms, all eight-year-olds, all 12-year-olds. Instead of putting kids in together by their knowledge and abilities and skills, everyone's lumped together by age. And what that does is it holds back the sharper kids because they're with kids that are not at the same reading, math, and science levels. Sigmund Freud was a um, Darwinian-based psychologist. He stated religious belief is a neurotic obsession which can be overcome by what he deemed as science. All of his ideas and philosophies have pretty much been overturned by real science. In the late 1800s, Professor Hodge of Princeton foretold correctly that a centralized system of national education will prove most appalling for the propagation of anti-Christian and atheistic unbelief. Talk about a man ahead of his time. By 1900, public education in this nation was filled with Darwinists, socialists, humanists, and communists who we lump together as progressionists today. They considered kids nothing more than evolving animals, their minds a blank slate on which they could impose their ideology. And that's what you see happening with these kids graduating today and rioting and burning things. They've had this progressive ideology imprinted upon their minds. These uh, social reformers developed Darwinian and Pavilonian-based theories on public education that serve as the foundation for today's government educational system. Children are trained like Pavlov's dogs. They're not taught to think for themselves, they're taught what to think. And if they come up with the correct response, they get a reward. If they don't give the correct response, they do not get a reward. John Dewey, he was the first president of the American Humanist Association, the largest atheist group in this nation. He was a co-author of the Humanist Manifesto, which is based on millions of years leading to Darwinian evolution being true. He introduced what's called progressive education into our school systems and now dominates public school teaching systems. The Bible tells us evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. Dewey said you can't make socialists out of individualists. Children who know how to think for themselves spoil the harmony of the collective society which is coming. This Italian uh, neo-Marxist, Antonio Gramsci, came up with an evil but brilliant plan on how to destroy Western civilization from within by undermining a nation's belief and trust in biblical absolutes 
and Christian morals, causing a nation to rot internally and implode upon itself. Founding Father John Adams, our second president, stated, Our Constitution was made for a moral and a religious people. It's wholly inadequate to the government of any other. To handle the freedoms our founding fathers gave to us through our biblical creator, you have to have high moral and ethical standards or you'll not be able to handle those freedoms. Dewey of Columbia University saw teachers as not teachers but change agents. Have you heard that term? Who could condition students to want to change their culture. Roger Baldwin, the founder of the ACLU, said communism is their goal. The ACLU's first office was shared in New York City with the masses newspaper, the largest communist newspaper in America. It was one of their lawsuits in 1962 that banned prayer from schools, and 1963 is the year to keep in mind. This is when the United States, that had been so richly blessed by God, Kick God out of their schools and out of our society officially, kicking cre- creation and prayer from our schools and starting to teach our children the foundation of secular humanistic atheism, millions of years leading to Darwinian evolutionism, as if these two beliefs were science. As we discussed last night, this is a direct assault on the gospel of Jesus Christ. The foundations for the gospel laid down in the first and the third chapters of the book of Genesis and what I call the cost. This is where we're told God gave us a perfect creation. It was perfect with no death in it. What in the world happened to it? It's full of death and suffering today. Well, Adam's original sin. Adam's original sin allowed death to enter, separating us from God and requiring Jesus' death on a cross to redeem believers with him for eternity in heaven. That's why you see creation under relentless assault from the progressive side. Moses also told us through the inspiration of God that God has judged man's sin once already with a flood that covered all the high hills under the whole heaven. And as I explained last night, if this were true, we would find the outer crust of the earth made up of sedimentary layers of rock that had been stratified by grain size, weight, and density by moving water. And what we find today is the outer crust of the earth averages a mile deep of stratified rock separated by grain size, weight, and density by moving water, full of billions of flood victims that were drowned and buried so quickly they didn't even have time to rot away or get eaten by scavengers. Meanwhile, the humanistic religious worldview is based on the exact same sedimentary layers of rock laid down by water. This is why they have to deny the global flood As I mentioned last night, as foretold in 2 Peter 3, they would do. Their belief, based on the same layers, is, hey, those layers laid down by water didn't form in a flood. They form slowly over millions and billions of years of time, putting death before man and undermining people's faith in the authority of God's word. This has actually been taught as science in our schools for the last 54 years. They're basically teaching kids that, hey, there was never a creator. There was no perfect creation corrupted by some original sin that separated you from some supposed creator, leaving no need for redemption with that supposed creator. No wonder Jesus said, if you believe not Moses' writings, how shall you believe my words. Richard Bozarth wrote in American Atheist, if Jesus was not the Redeemer who died for our sins, and this is what evolution means by putting death before Adam, Christianity is nothing. And I agree with that statement 100%. He is absolutely right. If millions of years of death existed before man, There was no original sin, no separation, and no need for redemption. He is absolutely right. And that's why we need to stop handing them the victory by compromising with their religious beliefs and start learning how to stand on the truth of God and his word. If evolution is an issue for you, get our science versus Darwinism in the textbook. It caused, I gave this at one college, a biology teacher came that night saw this information, quit her job, became a Christian, and now teaches science in a Christian school. The college ended up launching an accredited course attacking me personally. They ran for four years. 
for their final exam, they just made fun of me for an hour and a half. I've been married for 34 years. You think that's going to bother me any, huh? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's the reason Joanna's out at the resource table. We'll just keep that little joke to ourselves, right? <laughs> hey, have you ever heard you're 98% the same in your biochemistry as a chimpanzee, proving we're cro- close relatives to chimps? You ever hear that one? Now, now, real science, a believer's best friend, has that difference up to a 30% difference. Why do they keep saying it's only a 2% difference? I mean, if similar biochemistry proves evolution in our past, you know, your biochemistry is 75% the same as that from some worms. Your biochemistry is 50% the same as that from a banana. Anyone evolved from a banana? Just three people. That's not bad. Because last time I was at college campus, 500 students raised their hand and they were serious because they've been taught, we've been evolving from common ancestors, which would mean you are related to bananas. I got home that night from that college, checked out my family tree online. There wasn't a banana in the whole bunch. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Didn't find that very appealing. (laughs) Oh. Oh, hey, have you guys ever heard that you're, uh, you, know, you have two bones in the forelimb, uh, two, the uh, bird has two bones in its wing, a uh, whale has two bones in, the, in its flipper, and they teach that's proof we've all evolved from a common ancestor. Well, isn't that better proof we have the same designer? Yeah, I drive a Ford pickup truck. My next door neighbor has a Ford van, and their dashboards are identical. It's not because they evolved from a moped. It's because they had the same designer, right? You guys have probably seen all these supposed proofs. These are right out of the the college and high school textbooks. If you look closely at at the college or high school books in biology, they're proof for Darwinism. It's almost always drawings. Look at that, drawings. There's an old saying that goes like this. Darwinists are experts at drawing things that never existed to support their theory that never took place. Honestly, you take away their box of crayons, and they've got nothing, but they own the system. So in 1963, Florida Congressman Al Herlong tried to wake up Americans to the uh, communist goals taking place in our nation. On the House floor, he read the 45 published communist goals in America. Do away with loyalty oaths like the Pledge of Allegiance. Belittle American culture and history through our schools and get control of schools and teachers' unions. Joseph Stalin said, education is a weapon, the effect of which is determined by the hands which wield it. Education is a weapon. Vladimir Lenin said, give me your four-year-olds, and in one generation, I will build a socialist state. How many generations? One generation. President Barack Obama stated, I propose working with states to make preschool available to every child in America. This teacher uh, told me, a teacher's union rep pushing to begin four-year-olds in kindergarten told us, the sooner we get kids away from their parents and into the hands of knowledgeable teachers, the better. They are not doing this to help you and your children, my friends. They are doing this to get their ideology, ideology implanted on their blank slate minds at as early an age as is possible. Back to the 45 uh, communist goals. Eliminate prayer in public schools. Check it off the list. Break down cultural standards of morality. Check it off the list. Teach that homosexuality and promiscuity are normal and healthy. Check it off the list. The Obama administration's safe schools are was the same individual who wrote the foreword to the teacher's instruction manual titled Queering Elementary Education. Here is a teacher's pamphlet being used today that tells teachers to stop referring to students as boys and girls, but use gender-inclusive terms such as purple penguins. Call them purple penguins, not boys 
or girls. This manual tells teachers to, if you overhear children using terms like boys and girls, interrupt them to explain to them why that is wrong. The same manual tells teachers to line up students not by boys or girls, that would be wrong, line them up by who prefers dogs or cats. Unbelievable. See, back in 1962, the top uh, public school issues were kids chewing gum in class. Today, the problems include pregnancy, abortion, homosexuality, gang rape, and little boys and girls not knowing if they're a boy or a girl. Karl Marx said the first battlefield is the rewriting of a nation's history. The primary weapons of mass instruction include the rewriting of our history, focusing on negative propaganda and any negative thing that's ever happened in the nation, directed at Christianity and at the United States of America to develop children and kids and high school grads who are embarrassed to be Christians and ashamed of our nation. While people all over the world risk their lives to get here every year, we're teaching our children to be ashamed of our very own nation through our public schools. Mind-boggling. Mark said people without a heritage are easily persuaded. They're easily defeated. These kids coming out of high school do not see any reason to stand up for America. They think it's a horrible, terrible place that needs to fall. This is what they're being taught. In fact, this uh, columnist stated the prevailing education is destined to destroy Western civilization and is, in fact, destroying it. And this statement was back in the 1940s. It's about a million times worse today. Goals include convincing children to reject Christianity and be ashamed of our American culture and history. You're seeing that right before your eyes today. Lenin stated if we can kill the national pride and patriotism of just one generation, we will have won that country. How many generations? One generation. Here's an example right out of a, of a high school textbook. Kids, when Jefferson wrote, all men are equal, he really meant all citizens are equal. Women and blacks were not included. Well, first of all, Jefferson never in his life that I'm aware of wrote all men are equal. He wrote all men are created equal and endowed by who with their freedoms? Their creator. And yet we're in our 54th year of teaching our citizens there's no creator. Hmm. Here's another example. Students, Enlightenment thinkers in the American colonies were the first people in history to create a new government based on Enlightenment principles. Really? You know, what's left out is that the framers of the U.S. Constitution themselves listed the King James Bible as the number one reference source for the U.S. Constitution. Noah Webster, our greatest educator of all time, stated, Our citizens should early understand, that is, when they are children, should understand that the genuine source of correct Republican principles is the Bible, particularly the New Testament. Hmm, doesn't sound like it's so much based on Enlightenment principles to me. Adolf Hitler said, Let me control the textbooks, and I will control the state. Here's another example out of a public school textbook. Kids, Jesus learned the Jewish religion, then he started his own religion. Right out of a public school textbook. Here's an example out of a teacher's guide telling the teachers when you talk about the Roman Colosseum, make sure kids understand Christians were the true persecutors of that era. Here's a role-playing exercise for kids. Kids, take the role of a Roman disturbed by the rise of Christianity. And I want you as your homework assignment to write a letter telling why you are opposed to Christianity. Well, what do you think a Christian kid who's 8 or 10 years old thinks about that? How do you think that's going to affect him? What about all the other kids whose minds might still be open? Do you think they'd ever have a... a homework assignment like this against Muslims or Hindus? Of course not. 
I was speaking at a college a few years ago, and I always do the hour-long talk followed by an hour-long Q&A because I have to let the kids see the professors have nothing. If I just spoke and left, the professor would be, oh, boy, if I could have spoke. So I always have to do the hour-long Q&A so the kids can see, no, the professors have nothing. And one kid stood up, and instead of asking a question, he just said something horrible about Christianity. And the whole auditorium of 600 kids roared in laughter. And I just waited till it died down. And I said, now I've got a question for all of you. If this young man would have said something like that about a Muslim or a Hindu or a homosexual, he would have been kicked out of this college. But he said something like that about Christians, and you thought it was so funny. Why was that? You could have heard a pin drop. So I said, well, tell you what, I'm going to answer that question for you. You see, Satan already has Muslims and Hindus and homosexuals. He doesn't want you assaulting and belittling them. But Christianity is the real deal. And that's why in this college campus, in this world, it's okay to attack Christians when it's not okay to say anything bad about anybody else. Christianity is the real deal. Primary weapons of mass instruction employed by the public school include teaching there are no moral absolutes. Their goals are to convince kids to reject Christian morals and biblical absolutes. Moral relativism has ruled the roost for about 30 years now. Government schools teach kids there are no absolutes. In other words, what's right for you is fine, but it's just as equal to what this person thinks over here, which is no better, but just as equal to what this person thinks over here, moral relativism. Then they ask innocent little eight-year-old kids who they've implanted this ideology upon open-ended questions that steer them to accept the progressive viewpoint. Example, hey, little Johnny, since what's right for somebody else is just as valid as what is right for you, should homosexuals have the right to get married? And the answer would be yes. And that's why you see young people voting in homosexual marriage across the nation. Now, I have nothing against homosexuals as individuals, but it is tearing up marriage, which is another goal of the progressive movement. God loves homosexuals as much as he loves anybody else. You know, Hitler understood the importance of indoctrinating the youth. He said, he alone who owns the youth gains the future. Progress progresses, and Vladimir Lenin knew this lesson well. Back to the weapons of mass instruction. The goal is convince children to accept the coming one world government. This from the Humanist Manifesto 2. We deplore to the vision of humankind on nationalistic grounds and look forward to the development of a system of world law and order based upon a transnational federal government. Is that transnational or transgender? Let me. Yeah, transnational uh, federal government. Sorry, I get confused sometimes. This former Nebraska senator on, a, senator on a radio interview said, Bible-believing people do not have the right to indoctrinate their children in their religious beliefs because we, the state, are preparing them for when America will be part of a one-world global society and Christian children will not fit in. This was 34 years ago. It is 1,000 times worse out there today. The Department of Education and the NEA, the National Education Association, are not there for the benefit of children and their parents. They're there for the benefit of teachers' unions and administrators. In fact, the uh, chief counsel, the general counsel of NEA told their national convention, the NEA and its affiliates have been singled out by right-wing bleeps because we are the leading advocates of the type of liberal agenda that these groups find unacceptable. By liberal, he means progressive, socialist, communist agenda. Think about this. You always hear schools need more money, right? Okay, well, let's take a look at this. You know, we spend $700 billion annually on our government school system. It is the most expensive system in the world, $700 billion. It comes out to about $15,000 per child. So a class of 30 students costs taxpayers $450,000. Now, follow me on this. If the teacher gets $40,000, right, 
what happened to the other $410,000 per classroom times about a million classrooms across this nation? Where is it going? The general counselor said, it's not because we care about children, it's because we have power. And when you're skimming 400 plus grand per classroom times a million classrooms, you have power. And if, I, if there are teachers in here tonight, it's not the teachers, it's the curriculum. There are bad teachers, there are good teachers. But if you are supporting any of these groups, you need to think about what you're doing. This former U.S. Department of Education officials told the National Governors Association Conference that what we're into is the total transformation of society. We no longer see teaching and facts and information as the primary purpose of education. Public schools are not there to educate your children. They're there to indoctrinate them and change this country. A, think about what I'm saying here. Attending a public school and getting an education are not the same thing. You are not sending kids to get educated in public schools. You're sending them to indoctrination centers. America's kindergartners score in the top 90% of students in the world in science, reading, and math. The longer they're in public schools, the lower they score against competition, graduating high school in the bottom 20% worldwide. The longer they're in public school, the worse they are doing. 90% of parents say their kids are at or above grade level in reading and math. However, a recent study by the U.S. Department of Education says only 33% of 8th graders are at or above 8th grade level. Two out of three are below level. That means two out of three of those parents are wrong. Facts. 25% of high school grads are considered functionally illiterate in this nation. 25%. That's one out of four if you went to a public school. Sorry about that, just a little, little cheap shot there. Two out of three high school seniors, think about this, two out of three high school seniors are deemed unfit for college or the workforce. Two out of three. 30 million public school graduates cannot read that sentence. 30 million. 90% of high school seniors are considered physically unfit for military service. Many sex education videos qualify as pornography. While students are passed out free birth control pills and condoms like they were popcorn. Half of public school kids smoke, do drugs, drink booze, and engage in premarital sex. Oftentimes ruining their futures and their lives. And most public school teachers unfortunately vote progressive Democrat thinking they will get more money into that $700 billion system and somehow maybe a dollar or two will trickle down to them. They are your problem, teachers. You need to get rid of them so the money can go to you. We could, we could cut education by two-thirds and you would get more money and resources. And Jesus is banned from public schools. You can talk about Buddha and Allah all day long, but you cannot mention the name Jesus. Why? Because Christianity is the real thing. 80% of parents... Well, we'll talk about it in a minute. What's that? I didn't say that. I said, okay, I'll talk to you later. But if you were 27 years, I have teachers see this all the time. You're the only one that's argued. Every other one's come up and said, you are right on the button. 80% of parents rate public schools a D. Yet almost the same number of parents rate their child's school a B plus. Just because the teachers know your child's name doesn't change the curriculum. As I said, it's a curriculum, curriculum, not necessarily the teachers, but there are bad teachers in those schools as well. Public schools are not there to educate children. 
They are there to indoctrinate children in a world view. Back in 1983, the National Commission on Excellence in Education wrote a report to the Reagan administration stating, called a nation at risk. Remember, this was back in 1983, stating if an unfriendly power had attempted to impose on America the mediocre educational performance that exists today, we might have viewed it as an act of war. That was over 30 years ago. It is a million times worse today. It was in 1963 we kicked creation and prayer out of our schools and started teaching our kids they evolved over billions of years of time without God. In Romans 1, 28, we're told, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, being filled with all unrighteousness and fornication. Again, we kicked creation and prayer out of schools in 63, started teaching our future generations they evolved without God. By 1966, the drug culture and the sexual revolution exploded. We've gone from two sexually transmitted diseases to over 60, including the AIDS virus. Romans 1.30, filled with haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. Between 1967 and 1974, there was a major overhaul of our government schools. Two of the main publications used in this overhaul were the Taxonomy of Educational Objectives and Behavioral Science Teacher Education Project. The goals develop a culture where a few elite would rule the majority of dumbed-down individuals, which would have to be dependent upon the government for their existence. We've gone from about 20 people on government assistance to almost half the country today. Howard Phillips said the government schools are doing their best to train future generations to be servants of the state. The culture, the, the uh, goals were developed culture where chemical experiments on kids are considered to be normal. Is that not true for today? You know, every mass school shooting I've ever heard of, kids are on some of these drugs. They don't even know what the long-term effect is going to be. They're actually live chemical experiments on students. They, their goal is to develop students, think about the snowflakes now, who lack self-control so that their freedoms need to be taken away for their own good. Hmm. Try talking on a college campus today and see what happens, right? Top problems in public schools in 1962 uh, two, were kids talking out of turn. Today, the problems include suicide, aggravated assault, mass murder, and rioting if they don't get their way on the smallest trivial events. It was 1971, Saul Linsky's Rules for Radicals was published. You guys know who Saul Linsky is. Every American should know who Saul Linsky is. Rules for Radicals was based on the neo-Marxist goals of undermining biblical absolutes and Christian morals, causing a nation to rot internally and implode upon itself. Founding Father Jedediah Moore stated, Whenever the pillars of Christianity shall be overthrown, our present Republican forms of government must fall with them. Not might fall with them, must fall with them. Neo-Marxist Saul Alinsky, in his opening dedication, alluded to Lucifer, the very first radical who rebelled against the establishment and inherited his own kingdom. Lucifer in the dedication. Think about this. Saul Alinsky is known as the original community organizer. Does that term sound familiar to anybody? He said the first step in community organization is community disorganization. His rules for radicals were to get into every group across a nation, from the PTA to the schools to the colleges to the churches, every group, and come in with a far-left agenda. Every group has a set position. You come in with your far-radical position, it causes conflict. The goals are to divide people and cause conflict so they will compromise toward the radical view to end the conflict. Divide people by race, religion, income, gender, sexual orientation. Do you see that all across our nation today? That is Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals in Action. 
cause the compromise, cause the nation to implode upon itself. But what about those handful of people who refuse to compromise? You have to marginalize them. Alensky said the number one way to marginalize people who refuse to compromise is name-calling. Call them a racist, a homophobe. Call them stupid, unfit for office. Does that all sound familiar? That is all Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals. Well, what will happen is even if you agree with that person, they start calling that person name, and most people will kind of back away and leave that person standing all by themselves. Rules for radical. That is why you see all the name calling today, especially against President Trump. Romans 1.31, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. By 1973, we legalized abortion. We have aborted over 60 million U.S. citizens in this nation since that time. From 76 to 80, ACLU lawsuits banned things such as the Ten Commandments and even Christmas displays from schools. Today, our nation is the largest exporter of pornography in the world. We have same-sex marriage and transgender children today. Former president and community organizer Barack Obama. I don't think we had any of those things going eight years ago, did we? Hmm. Said, whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. Biblical absolutes and Christian morals have been undermined in this nation. And we are only starting to reap the fruit. Harry Truman warned the nation in 1950. The fundamental basis of the nation's law was given to Moses on the mount. If we don't have the proper moral background, we'll end up with a totalitarian government. We missed it last November by a hair's breadth. Abraham Lincoln said the philosophy of the classroom today will be the philosophy of the government tomorrow. My friends, the greatest generation and baby boomers are being replaced every day by victims of our public school educational system who have no clue about our biblical morals, their God-given rights, America's true heritage, and the list is literally endless. No wonder the Bible said, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Public school curriculum promotes Darwinism, moral relativism, and the progressive agenda while undermining the United States of America biblical principles, and faith in Christ Jesus. This column is stated, public schools are liberalism's reproductive system. This Christian and former teacher who could no longer stand the public school stated, homosexuals, radical environments, and atheists are given free reign to pervert the minds of your children by a public school system that is eager to attack Christian educators and undermine Christian children. Christian teachers on being the salt and the light. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You know, you might, I've talked to many good Christian teachers, and they might, those kids might be perfectly safe in that one classroom. One out of the 12 years are in public school. But you've got to give some thought. If you are convincing parents that their kids are safe in public schools just because you are a good Christian teacher, you might want to rethink what you're, what you're doing. In fact, this uh, former teacher and uh, Christian told me that there are many Christian teachers in public school systems. However, they're scared to death to say anything wrong and lose their jobs. You can't put your Christian hat on Sunday morning, take it off Monday morning, and put on your John Dewey, Karl Marx hat and head off to work and impacting children in a negative way. To Christian parents who see their kids as assault and the light. Unitarian minister and signer of the Human Manifesto, Charles Potter, stated in 1930, education is the most powerful ally of humanism, and every public school is a school of humanism. Parents, your child is not an evangelistic tool to take on the multi-billion dollar educational system, hundreds of trained professional adults, and thousands of peer pressuring children. 90% of Christians put their kids in public school, and almost 90% of Christian children leave the church 
by the age of 20. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, He that walks with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Charles Stanley said, When you send a child into a public school, you're sending them into a pagan society. Parents, would you send your children to a Muslim school? Would you send them to a New Age school? Well, then why in the world would you send them to a public school? Back to Charles Potter. What can the Theistic Sunday School meeting for an hour a week do to stem the tide of a five-day program of humanistic teaching? And the answer is not a lot. Parents, your child is your responsibility to raise and educate. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. John Duffy wrote in The Humanist, The battle for humankind's future must be waged and won in the public school classroom by teachers who correctly perceive their role as the proselytizers of a new faith, a religion of humanity, that will replace the rotting corpse of Christianity. Believers, we need to be praying for our families, teaching good apologetics, and making the best investment of your eternal life. Either find a true Christian school that promotes a biblical worldview, that employs only God-honoring teachers, and refuses to compromise the Word of God, or homeschool your children. Because you have seen the village... And you do not want the village raising your family. Do you know who Saul Alinsky said was the best student he ever had? Hillary Clinton. We missed by a hair. That's the reason they're so upset. They thought they had it. They thought it was over. And they've been set back for how long we can't say. But let me ask you a question. How many generations does it take a nation to go from being a God-honoring nation to being a pagan nation? How many generations? One. One generation. The calling of our ministry is to teach about creation, evolution, and age of the earth issues, expose false anti-biblical teachings, and provide a reason for the hope that's in the heart of all true believers and all true seekers. If you ask me, well, Russ, what's your answer? My answer would be, if every Christian would pull their kids out of public schools, those public schools would collapse in short order. Then we, having power and being in charge, could come back and say, here's how we will re reorganize schools, giving the uh, education systems back to each state to, to service and set up for themselves. And this would then create states that are competing to have the best educational systems. Our educational systems would skyrocket over the first five years, skyrocket, as the results would as well. And we could return to teaching biblical creation and God-honoring fear of God as well as the greatness of our nation to our children. In other words, in one generation, we could build a God-honoring, God-fearing, America-loving nation once again. One generation. Yeah. My friends, get out and do something. Our nation, Christianity, is under massive assault. The apathy within the church is tremendous. We need to do something. We need to get out there and make a difference. Um, I'll just tell you, I don't copyright my DVDs. You get our DVDs, I say make a million copies, give them to everybody you know. Ask them to make a million copies, give them to everybody they know. Let's make a difference. God bless you guys. This has been Inside the Public School Nightmare, presented by Russ Miller. To receive a free catalog of hundreds of awesome Bible studies on DVD video and audio CD, all using and defending a literal translation of the Bible, information on upcoming Bible conferences in your area, or details of our missionary outreach and trips to Israel, call Compass at 800-977-2177 24 hours a day, or visit us on the web at compass.org. And be sure to like us on Facebook. Search facebook.com slash compassbible.